In the world of mechanical keyboards, high customizability and high cost are usually two factors that come hand in hand. However, today we're going to be talking about the Max Keyboard Nighthawk Z, a keyboard in the $100 price range that boasts some pretty serious customizability for its price tag. Let's take a look. Welcome to Top Spec, your one-stop shop for tech content. Before we start this video, let me give you the usual disclaimer. We were sent today's product for free, but all opinions expressed in this video will be my own. Anyways, let's jump right in. So right off the bat, the big selling point of this keyboard and the reason you're probably watching this video is because of the custom keycap printing available for the Nighthawk. Max Keyboard has a configuration tool on their website that allows you to pick individual colors for every single key, pick whether certain groups of keys have labels or not, and change the color of the text on every individual key. You can even print on the front side of the keycap if you're into that. By the way, the method used to print onto the keycaps is called UV color printing, which from the research I have done seems to be a pretty durable way of printing onto ABS keycaps, but it's nothing like double shot molding. If you're not familiar, UV printing involves using a special kind of ink that cures via UV light, while double shot molding is a more rare yet highly durable process that involves injecting plastic directly into the keycap itself. That being said though, double shot molding and custom printing are basically antonyms, so this is not a critique at all. I should also mention that you are capable of uploading your own artwork onto the keys should you please. I did not choose to do that with the keyboard you see in front of me, but there are plenty of examples of that being done on Max Keyboard's Instagram page, so I'll leave a link to that down below. Anyways, let me show off the configuration I made. I wanted to keep it simple but match it with our channel's colors, so I made all of the alphanumeric keys white and put light blue labels on them, and I made the rest of the keys light blue and blank. Personally, I think it turned out pretty cool, but let me know what you guys think down below. I should also mention that the customization goes beyond the keycap printing, you're also capable of picking whatever switch you'd like. At the moment of recording, they only have two options, but several months ago they had loads to choose from, so I assume they're just out of stock of many of the other switches because it is the holiday season after all. My configuration has Cherry MX Blues, which might not be my personal preference, but they've certainly grown on me over the past few months of me using this device. One last thing that I want to mention is that you aren't able to pick the material or the profile of the keycaps, they are made out of ABS and the profile is OEM. For me, this is fine because this fits my personal preferences, but yours may be different, so it's worth pointing out. Beyond the keyboard's customizability, it's not necessarily the most special in terms of features, but that might not be a bad thing depending on what you're looking for. While it does technically have LED backlighting, I haven't found a way to actually activate the lights outside of a spiral animation that happens when you plug it in. You could very well be able to control them, but to my knowledge there is no information on the internet that tells you how to do so. But it also does not include a wrist rest unless you opt in to buy the separate foam wrist pad. However, there are a few real critiques that I have that you should highly take into consideration. The cable, although braided, is not detachable, so this certainly brings the keyboard's lifespan as a whole into question. Additionally, though 104 key keyboards are a large form factor, the frame is pretty bulky and honestly makes the keyboard feel pretty damn big. Now I'm sure this has to do with the fact that Max Keyboard hand assembles all of their products since they are custom after all, and it must just be easier to work with a larger frame, but this still does make it harder to fit on your desk, so it is some worthy criticism. Something I can't defend though is the fact that the frame is made out of a cheap feeling plastic, but with the customization that this keyboard allows for, I can understand them opting to choose a more inexpensive plastic frame over something like a metal frame. Moving on, the Nighthawk has three unlabeled white indicator LEDs in the upper right for caps lock, num lock, and scroll lock. Additionally, on the bottom side of the keyboard, there are four rubber pads that do a decent job of keeping the keyboard in one place while typing. There are also two feet that can be extended if you're into typing at an angle. I will say though that it does move around a little bit more when the feet are extended even though it has rubber pads on the bottom of the feet as well. The last thing that I'd like to touch on is the fact that the branding is extremely minimal for this keyboard, but that makes sense considering the amount of customization it allows for. The only thing that really says that this is a Max Keyboard product is a sticker on the back side. As I mentioned earlier, I picked Cherry MX Blues, so there really should be no surprises with the acoustics of this keyboard, but what would a keyboard video be without a typing test? So I'm going to be doing two quick demonstrations, one where I bottom out the keys and one where I don't.
So hopefully that gave you an idea of what this keyboard sounds like. In addition to the typing test, something that I've been doing on this channel with every keyboard review is playing a few rounds of Nitro Type to gauge how fast I can type and how accurate I am. Obviously this is a very unscientific test, especially when you consider the fact that I have a major preference to brown switches over anything else. But it should be noted that both blue and brown switches are great for typing speed and accuracy. The major difference between the two is just acoustics. So anyways, here are the results when you compare the Nighthawk to two other keyboards. You'll notice that it lies slightly underneath the Black Widow Lite that I reviewed earlier this year in terms of words per minute, but again, I would attribute that to my confidence that browns give me while typing. Then in terms of accuracy, there's no surprises here. All of the keyboards are within an acceptable margin of error of each other. Though the Nighthawk Z lacks some more premium features and its build quality is honestly nothing to write home about, you can't beat its customizability for its price. I have scoured the internet trying to find services that allow you to pick your own Cherry Max switch and get custom keycaps, and for this price I have not found anything that fits that criteria. However, I will point out that Max Keyboard also sells full 104 key custom printed keycap sets for only $25, so if you are interested in the custom keycap printing but aren't sold on the quality of the Nighthawk, you're always free to buy the keycap set and get whatever keyboard you want. After all, the keycap printing is the best thing about the Nighthawk, so I could wholeheartedly recommend doing that. Anyways, that's all I really have to say. If you are new to the channel, we upload tech videos every single Monday, including keyboard reviews and a whole host of other content. So if that sounds like it's up your alley, be sure to subscribe and check out our ever-growing catalog of videos.